as promised, we're going to do a comparison between these two. We're going to look at the Les Paul Studio and the Les Paul Tribute. Both of these are more than a grand cheaper than a Les Paul Standard. The more that I've played both of these, the less I'm convinced you need a Les Paul Standard. Just gonna play something, put a little loop down, fiddle around with the knobs. Hopefully you better see what I'm doing on knob cam here. And uh, that's, I'm not the, well, I am the knob, am I? Okay, let's just get on with it, shall we? Hello everyone, thanks for joining us today. It's good to see you. Right, let's get stuck in today. Another two Les Pauls, side by side, another comparison. As promised, we're going to look at the Les Paul Studio that we reviewed just last week and the Les Paul Tribute, which we reviewed, I think, what, three or four weeks ago? Both of these are what you would could probably call entry-level Gibson Les Pauls, you know, branded Gibson Les Paul, Gibson on the headstock. Gibson through and through, made in USA, Les Pauls. Um, cheap Les Pauls, you might say, but cheap's a little bit of an oxymoron <laughs> wherever Gibson's concerned, uh, particularly because they're not, they're not cheap anyway. I mean, they're, they're far from affordable. But compared to a Les Paul standard, they are a lot more affordable than a Les Paul standard. Um, so, for instance, a Gibson Les Paul standard is currently listed on Gibson's website for... 2,699 US dollars. Whereas the studio here is only, only $1,599. So it's $1,100 cheaper than a Les Paul standard. And the tribute here is listed at $1,299. So you can save $1,400 over a Les Paul standard if you go for the tribute. So great options if, if you want a Gibson Les Paul uh, but want to save yourself enough money to buy a car or something. However, having said that, I think both of these guitars have probably got a little bit more going on than just being a, a cheap version of a Les Paul. We established that in, in the independent reviews, that they're both suitably uh, different to warrant consideration in their own right. Um, you know, I think probably a case could be made for needing all of them, <laughs> which is why I ended, up, I ended up with the studio anyway, because, you know, initially I thought, well, I can't get both of them. So I decided on the tribute because the net profile looked to be more up my alley, if you like. Um, but then I ended up getting the studio anyway, because once I got the tribute, I thought, well, actually, it looks to be quite a lot different than studio. So we better get studio and find out. So that's what we're going to do today. What's the difference? Let's get stuck in. OK, so let's start with the basic construction bodies. The bodies on these are both mahogany and they both got maple caps. However, these are from Gibson's modern collection and they've got the ultra modern weight relief, which is this. So they both got chambered bodies to reduce the weight, basically. Obviously, you can see the finish is different. The, these are both nitrocellulose. The Tribute is satin nitrocellulose, as you can see. And the Studio is gloss nitrocellulose. The bodies on these are both the same thickness. Now, sorry, I'm just turning over and looking at my notes here. The body thickness, and as you remember, if you saw the review on this one, I measure them at the arse of the guitar, which is what I call this bit for want of a better term. Um, they both measure 47 mil, although actually, to be honest, the 
studio is a tiny little bit thicker because of the the paint we would you know we would assume it's only a you know a fraction though but they're both 47 mil which differs which is, is still thinner than the les paul standards measure 52 so they're about five mil thicker on the actual les paul standard and the epiphones as as um we discovered in the the five-way comparison that we did just a few weeks ago let oh yeah, there's the link there um, that's 50 mil okay so these are thinner thinner than the epiphones and the and the gibsons and color options on the studio you've got one red smokehouse burst tangerine burst and this one ebony and on the tribute uh, you've got iced tea tobacco burst cherry burst and this one here which i call poo burst but is actually honey burst moving on to the next the studio has got the traditional mahogany neck whereas the tribute here it's got a maple neck fingerboards are both rosewood on these although as you can see and i did comment in the in the review of the tribute it, it looked quite if you know if i had guessed i'd probably said that was laurel or something like that because it's not as dark as the studio the studio's got quite a nice and neither of these have been treated by the way but you can imagine if you put a bit of you know a bit of oil on the um on the studio that would darken up quite nicely the tribute's quite quite light isn't it um i'm not really you know whether it's a different batch i suppose or a different i don't know is it a different species but they they both say they're both rosewood according to the specs they've both got medium jumbo frets and they both got graph tech nuts that look to be identical yep i've not had any tuning issues with either of these guitars in their individual reviews hopefully we won't have today i, I mentioned that because a few people ask it's a recurring question you know people ask did it stay in tune um because they've had a bad experience in the past you know the g string is notorious for going out of tune i mentioned it's before but i will mention it again because it is a it's a it's a frequent comment in, in the comments funnily enough the, the g-string and and not, my answer is always the same it's the nut is the problem because of the break angle on the uh, headstock and in the way the angle that the string then heads off and if the nut is too tight it will stick there or it can stick there um and the problem is specifically that when you tune a guitar if it's sticking sticking if it's sticking uh, a bit of slack can build up build up there okay i hope the camera's picking that up a bit of slack can build up there it's tight there you see so it's not until you bend the string or play it that you'll put enough pressure on it to relieve that tension and that slips okay i think that was a good explanation of it um so if when you're tuning the guitar you make sure you're tuning up to pitch you never never tune it down because if you tune it down the first thing you'll do is put a little bit of slack in that before it affects that so tune up to pitch and always do that always pull it tight Make sure you pull it tight and uh, you shouldn't have any problems. If that slot's a little bit too tight, what I often do is get the next gauge up string, like the, the, the wound D. When you change the strings, get the old one, stick it in the slot and go like that. You know, like you're flossing, <laughs> like you're flossing and uh, just open up the slot a little bit. So you don't need any special tools or anything. I mean, it's worked for me. I mean, I'm not you know, going to help responsible if you screw your guitar up, but it, it you know, it, give it a go. Uh, and, you know, get, a, so I don't actually use nut sauce or um, pencil lead, say. It's pencil lead's good, graphite, it, you know, it helps it slip, lubricate, it helps lubricate it. I don't actually bother with any of that at all. I say, if I have any problems, that's what I'll do. I'll just open it up a little bit with a, bit of flossing and then you're good to go 
and you'll need to do that if you go up a gauge of strings on Gibsons. So these, these come fitted with 10s. If you use 11s, well, firstly, you're a mad fool if you use 11s anyway, but some of you do. Um, if you use 11s, you'll probably need to, you know, open that up a little bit. So there you go. Every day's a teaching day, eh? Now, here's an interesting thing. We've, we've established that these, these are both mahogany with maple cap, and they've both got ultra-modern weight relief, and they're both the same thickness, although the neck on the Tribute is maple, and I've always been led to believe that maple's heavier than mahogany, which is one of the reasons why Les Pauls are so heavy to start with. But just weigh both of these, uh, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. The, the Tribute weighs... A seven point seven pounds eight ounces or uh, three point four zero kilograms, whereas a studio weighs in at eight pounds five ounces or three point seven seven kilograms. So there's about a pound difference. This studio is heavier. So if lightweight is, is a, a priority for you, you know, maybe the tribute. Okay, here we are. So first, let's have a quick listen to them unplugged for what it's worth. Is the Tribute a tiny bit brighter? Don't forget, it's a pound lighter. Could be. Let's listen to them plugged in. Rig I'm using today is same Black Star 1 watt head, the HT1HR. And today I've changed the cab. I'm using a little Black Star 1x12 uh, cab today. The um, the signal chain's all in the description box, by the way. On the board, I've got the Polytune going into the Boss CS3 for a little bit of compression. And drive pedals again, I've got Soul Food, and I've got the Boss uh, Super Overdrive SD1, which will be off or on at various <laughs> intervals <laughs> through the remainder of this film. And I'll try and cut in the the bald, the bald cam, <laughs> so you can see what my foot's treading on. Um, okay, little bit of slap dap, little bit of slap dap. I can't say it. Little bit of slap back delay, because um, it's nice. Okay, right. This is the boring bit, really. I hate doing this. I need to try and devise an interesting way of doing this, but so far I've failed. So let's try and keep it brief. I'm just going to try and go through each pickup on each of the guitars so that you can hear what the clean sounds are, see if you can hear any difference. All controls on 10. Okay, that was a little bit dull, I think, but what I'm going to do now is hopefully going to be a little bit more interesting. Just going to play something, put a little loop down, fiddle around with the knobs 
you could probably hopefully be able to see what I'm doing on knob cam here. And uh, that's, I'm not the, well, I am the knob, and I? I walked into that, didn't I? Um, okay, well, let's just get on with it, shall we? Hardware on these guitars, the studio, it's got the Grover tuners, everyone loves a Grover. The Tribute has got the vintage Cluson Deluxe style tuners. Bridge and the tailpiece on these are identical, except that on the studio this is chrome plated aluminium, both the tailpiece and Nashville Tunematic bridge. These are chrome plated aluminium. And on the Tribute, they're nickel-plated aluminium. They're identical, and we know that because we weighed them in individual reviews. And um, they're both really lightweight. The, um, the tail pieces weigh 35 grams, and the bridges both weigh 28, 29 grams. So this is good stuff. This is really good stuff. We like this. Uh, as you can see, the... The studio hasn't got a poker chip on it, but it has got one in, in the gig bag. You've got to install it yourself. Same as the Tribute. Um, the reason I haven't installed it on the studio is because it's really fiddly and it took ages to put this on the Tribute. And uh, it was just annoying, to be honest with you. I don't know why they don't fit them. We've got speed knobs on the studio versus gold top hat knobs on the Tribute. So let's look at the pickups. Both of these guitars have got the Gibson 490R in the neck positions. However, while the Tribute's got the 490T in the bridge, the studio here's got a 498T, which is a lot hotter. Show you what I mean. We'll measure them again. So let's uh, start with the studio here on the, uh, on the neck. 7.56 kilo ohms at 4.24 or we're saying 4.21 henrys is the inductance let's just whip that over to the the tribute showing uh, 7.64 kilo ohms on the neck it's uh you know four, yeah 4.24 henrys so they're they're broadly the same whereas the bridge on the um on the tribute, the 
the resistance on the bridge is 7.85 kilo ohms. The inductance is uh, 4.29 Henry's. And the studio, 13.59 kilo ohms. With inductance of 6.74 Henry's. So yeah, this, the pickup in the studio here is really hot. Okay, let's put these neck profiles and measurements up on the screen here, side by side, so you can compare them. As you can see here, the, I mean, I said earlier, the tribute is, you know, is a slightly chunkier neck, and you can see that here. They're both 43 mil at the nut. Um, at the 12th fret, the um, studio is actually slightly wider by, half, what, half a mil? Depth wise, at the first fret, there's more than a there's more than a millimeter in it. The um the you know the tribute being about a, a millimeter deeper, and and up at the twelfth fret, you know nearly two, so it's a little bit chunkier. And you can see the profiles there. In reality, they don't feel a huge amount of difference. I mean, it's not that the the tribute is is fat. It's just kind of a little bit fatter than the studio. But you know, you know, you'll have a preference. And this is definitely something that can, like, like with me, it informed the decision um, for which one to buy. <laughs> which one to buy first, anyway. So hopefully there was enough play in there for you to be able to compare the two sonically, you know, with the variety of positions. You'd be able to hear, well, there's, there's very little difference um, that I'm hearing, certainly. There is a difference. I can hear a difference. So I expected the bridge pickup to make a big difference because the readings are so different. But in reality, it's, it's only a bit. It's only a bit. It's, you know, it's, it's definitely pushing the amp a little bit more. But what surprised me is that I can also hear a difference in the neck pickups. To me, the Tribute is, is sounding a little bit more of a kind of vintage open sound. Whereas the Studio is, it feels a little bit more heavyweight. It feels like it's, you know, it's got a bit more girth to it. It's a bit more heavyweight, both sonically and physically. Because of course it is a pound heavier than the the, the, the tribute, so I'm, I'm I'm definitely wondering whether or not that extra weight you can hear the extra weight. You know, I I feel that the studio is encouraging a little bit more, you know, pinched harmonics and stuff than the tribute. But you know, as I say, it, it's tiny the margin because the tribute's doing that anyway. So it's interesting. Well, I hope it's interesting. <laughs> Obviously, you know, the big difference is this is gloss and this is satin. So if you like a nice satin neck, a tribute is definitely the one to go for. If you like a gloss neck, you know, that's a nice sticky Gibson 
nitrocellulose gloss neck all the way on the studio there. What I will say about the finish of this studio, the gloss black nitrocellulose, as you will recall, if you saw the review last week, this came without a mark on it, not a scratch on it. You know, straight from the factory, straight out of the box. So no one's messed with it. But what you do find and what I've found already, I don't think you'll be able to see it, but I can already see that little scratches are beginning to appear on the surface where you just do that, you know, or you, you give it a rub with a cloth or a stuff. You, you know, you will start to see these swirly scratches. Even just a cloth will put those into a soft nitrocellulose finish. These finishes are really soft. It's not at all apparent on the Tribute, you know, because it's got a satin finish, so you can't, well, at least you can't see it. Whereas, obviously, black shows up every mark anyway. Um, but, yeah, now I'm looking at it now and go, oh, okay, yeah, this wasn't like it out of the box, but this is stuff that I've put on. So, you know, be aware, you know, be aware that if you're going to get a black guitar, it'll look pretty tatty pretty quickly. I don't mind if I put the scratches on myself. I've said that time and again. I just object if a shop does it, you know, buffs up one of their ex demo guitars and then tries to pretend they haven't, you know. You know what I mean. As far as the coil taps on this are concerned, a lot of people might think it's a, a, a bonus, but not me. I, you know, I think it's a bit of a nuisance more than anything personally. Um, when I'm playing just there, I'm, you know, I'm playing away and I think, oh, I'll, I'll tap the pickup and get a different sound coming out of it. And invariably, it's not the sound I was looking for or expecting. So I just switch it back to how it was. So, yeah, I'm not, not you know, um, not something I'm a fan of, as, as you know, as I've said before. So, but I get that some people will like them and, um, you know, that's cool. It might be a reason for you to buy this one rather than the Tribute. So I'd probably end up changing these. But I'd probably end up changing the Tribute anyway because um, the tone controls aren't great. They're not, you know, they're okay. They work, but they're not, they're not nice. I, I, if I'm going to keep a guitar and play it long term, if it hasn't got great pots in it, I'll put some in and put some orange drop capacitors in it or something and 50s wiring so that you've got some real nice dark tones on tap, uh, you know, and do away with the, uh, the ready-made alternatives. Forgot to mention earlier, actually, the studio has got a really nice metal uh, jack plate as opposed to the plastic one. How do we summarize this? So, okay, so if you're trying to decide which of these to buy, things that can influence your decision, well, definitely price, because the Tribute is $300 cheaper, or thereabouts. Um, the Tribute's lighter, so that might mean you would go for the Studio because you prefer a heavy, a heavy guitar, but this is not a heavy guitar. The Studio weighs the right amount for a Les Paul, as far as I'm concerned, which is about eight and a half pounds. So the studio is the one that feels, you know, more like a Les Paul. Um, but then it's got a gloss sticky neck and it's, it's the, you know, the slim taper neck. You, know, you might prefer a medium profile satin neck. 
the tribute's got that. So the big difference is there already. Price, feel of the neck, and the weight. Sound-wise, they're, so, they're, they're really close. Uh, and you can, and both will do whatever you want to do with them. So the fancy switch in as well might, you know, might influence your decision. If you want a little bit more versatility or um, interference, as I call it, the studio. So normally at this point, I would say, well, which one am I going to keep or which one would I keep if I could only keep one? But I don't think we're finished with them yet. It's funny, when I bought the Tribute, or when I ordered the Tribute, I thought, well, I get that in, it's expensive guitar. These are both way more expensive than guitars we normally review on here, as you, as you probably know. But I thought, well, I get the Tribute, I'll review it, because I wanted to do the comparison with the Epiphones and stuff. Review it, and then I'll sell it on. But then, of course, once I had it and done that, I thought, well, I, I better get the studio as well and find out what the differences are. So I thought I ordered the studio and I thought, well, once I've got that, I'll review it and compare it and then we'll, we'll sell them both. But um, yeah, as you guessed, that's not going to happen immediately. I don't think we're finished with these yet. I think, I think we need to dig a little bit deeper. We probably need to bring the Les Paul standard into this little, you know, this little comparison now and, and do something else. Um, because the more that I've played both of these, the less I'm convinced you need a Les Paul standard, or the less I'm convinced you need to spend the extra thousand pounds, thousand dollars, thousand pounds and thousand dollars plus, you know. Um, I, I, you know, I love that Les Paul standard I've got. You know, this one, I'll show you. This one here, the Les Paul standard 50s. Which, as you can see, is beautiful, it, you know. But, you know, the more I have played these, the less point I see in this thing, you know, apart from, I suppose, the, you know, the feeling you get from owning a Les Paul standard. Um, which doesn't last long. <laughs> it doesn't last long because you're constantly thinking, crikey, there's a lot of money tied up in that. I need a new car. I'll sell it and get a new car, <laughs> you know. You might have one of these, but constantly be hiding how much you paid <laughs> for it from your, your, your better half. These things are a liability. And actually, you can get both of these for what it costs you to get one of these. It's tricky, isn't it? Tricky. That makes it harder because initially I got the tribute and asked the question, is it a real Les Paul? Yeah, it is. Absolutely. And then I've got the studio. Makes it harder because now I've got two real Les Pauls um, that you can own for the cost of one Les Paul standard. So I think we are going to have to have a little bit of fun um, pitching the three against each other and seeing if I could decide which ones I'm going to sell. Because I can't keep them all. I can't keep them all, you know. <laughs> or only for a mat for a mat for so long, perhaps, you know, until I've managed to get enough uh, mileage out of them through the channel. And then I will, I, you know, I'll have to sell some of them, won't I? Because I can buy, <laughs> I can buy, I can buy half a dozen decent guitars if I sell these two, can't I? So yeah, I will be doing that. I think yeah, and I think what we'll do is we'll have a bit of fun, and then we'll and then we'll get. I might. I can see that the the Les Paul standard's going to go first, but I don't know. I don't know. I think we should find out. All right. Well, there you go. That's that's that's, and the story continues. <laughs> uh, yeah, keep your eye out for that, won't you? We'll be back. More Les Paul nonsense coming soon. For now. Thank you very much for joining us. It's been a pleasure <laughs> and hopefully you'll come back next week and see what we're up to then. Cheers for now. Ta-da.